for your giving this morning. You got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. I think sometimes we don't realize just how blessed we are. I really don't. I, I, I honestly think that we just don't understand how blessed we are. You, you've all heard the story. I, 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 you know, I didn't have a good looking pair of shoes and then I saw somebody with no feet. You've heard those, those things. And it's made to grab a hold of your heartstrings and make you realize just how blessed you are. We've had folks that have attended our services here who don't even have a home. And what they sneak into every night to get out from whatever elements might be falling from the heavens or even to try to stay somewhat warm in a cold, cruel world. Sometimes we forget just how blessed we are. I called Bubby yesterday to say, hey, I think my air conditioner's messing up. And then I thought, how blessed I am that I have an air conditioner. And while it wasn't as cool as I'd like to have been in the house, thank God it was a lot cooler than it was outside the house. Amen. I thank God for his blessings because there are more times than not we're blessed and don't take the time to say, golly gee willikers, thanks, Lord. But we should. We should take the time to say thank you and remind him that we are mindful of his blessings. I want to share with you from Galatians 3 something that has been just bubbling in my heart for the last two weeks. And then we took the pulpit away from me last Sunday. I wanted to preach it then, but I sure liked what I got because I'm going to deal with that fellow that he talked about, Abraham. Something that got to, I, I know it, I've known it, I've declared it in so many ways, but I read something. I read something in Galatians. In fact, I may even go so far as to try to come back and do a, a series from the book of Galatians. And then, lo and behold, lo and behold, I went so far as to start reading in the book of Ephesians. And I found something there that I'm going to touch on tonight such as night is at the time we come to church because it's bright outside at that time. But God's been showing me his word in such a powerful way. God's been revealing his word to me in such a way. I, you know how you get. You get cocky after all. I know everything that's in the Bible. I don't need to be. No, we don't. Every once in a while, every once in a while, he'll take you someplace where you think you've studied it all. And the Holy Ghost goes, surprise. How did I not see that before? How have I not said that before? Galatians 3. I've given you more than enough time. Are you there? If not, don't worry. They're going to put it up on the big board above my head back here. Galatians 3 and 1. Oh, foolish Galatians. What a great way to talk to people you love. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth but before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? How did you get the Holy Ghost? Oh, we... We recited the Ten Commandments until the Holy Ghost fell upon us. I have never met anybody that got to baptism of the Holy Ghost reciting the Ten Commandments. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain, Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? For just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith, those who are of faith, those who are of faith, yeah. listen, are sons of Abraham. And the scripture 
for seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. I want to preach on that subject. Those who are of faith are blessed. I've never seen anybody who was of doubt blessed. Have you? Oh, look at Sister Trina. She is so full of doubt. Isn't she blessed? You ever hear that? You never heard that, did you? Yeah. 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 Oh, look at Sister Minnie Pike. Oh, so full of doubt, just oozes out of every pore of her being. She is so blessed. You ever hear that, Sister Minnie? <laughs> you may have heard something, but you didn't hear that, right? I could go on. I could pick on every one of you. I'm not going to because it'll take too long. There's more of you here today than the last time. But the fact of the matter is, it's easy to see somebody who's walking by faith in Jesus above Trusting, confiding in his great love. And from all harm safe in his sheltering arms. Oh, we're living by faith and we're blessed for it. And we feel no alarm. Somebody say amen. amen. I can see people who are walking by faith, living by faith, talking by faith, being in existence by faith. And I can say, blessed are they. But I ain't never seen anybody loaded down with doubt, and anxiety, and grief, and woe. And the list goes on. And say, Whew, man, I sure want to be like them. Uh, no, I don't. Come on. Somebody said, misery loves company. Well, it may. But let me tell you, it's not a happy bunch that's hanging around in misery. I can guarantee you that. Father, help me. I know what you showed me, and all I want to do is make sure that I share it with them. So, that, Father God, I can see light bulbs go on over their head. That in Christ's name, God, for maybe the first time, like me, I knew it. I proclaimed it. I lived it. But I didn't understand it until I got into your word. Help me to share it. I pray in Christ's name, and everybody said Amen and amen. Paul is dealing with the Galatians who have begun their spiritual journey by faith. They began their spiritual journey in faith by faith. They have now, though, something's gone wrong. <laughs> now they are beginning to abandon their faith to attempt to live by works of the flesh, specifically the works of the law. Now, folks, please understand, the law of God is the law of God. But God gave it for a far different reason than many of us have come to understand. He's given it to us, and I'm going to share with you what it is. Paul clearly states that the cause of Christ's death was vividly portrayed to them as if they were looking at a picture. How many of you know, well, Sister Nolan been working on, on the scrapbooks like crazy, got all these pictures from eons gone by, and you can clearly see those moments in time, those moments in our personal history, our family, our friends, and so on. We see those moments, they're clearly portrayed. Paul says, I'm not putting together a scrapbook, but you need to understand something, Galatians. You need to understand that the death of Jesus Christ on the cross was so vividly portrayed to you, it was as if you were looking at a Polaroid moment. So you were seeing a picture. Paul didn't even know what it was to even have a picture per se. They had not received the Holy Ghost baptism through the obedience of the law of Moses, but by believing the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to say something to the church of God here today. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is included in the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Jesus told his disciples, it's so important, you need to hang around. You need to stay in town and wait for the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father, which is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, is very much a part of the gospel. I don't know where we get the idea that we don't need to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost to get to heaven. No, you probably don't. The fact of the matter is, it requires the blood of Christ applied up over the threshold of your heart, of your soul. But honey, let me tell you, when you've got the power of the Holy Ghost working within you, you've got a whole lot better chance of just sitting around and going, I'm saved. I'm telling you, it's the power of the Holy Ghost that has brought me through, seen me through, will get me through. Standing over there in the living room of the parsonage in April of 2016, I was so upset. I was so overwhelmed. I was so battle weary. I had $600 in my pocket. Had a 2006 Ford Ranger sitting outside with a half a tank of gas. I was going to grab up a small barrel bag that I had, throw me a couple of three changes of underwear and socks in there, maybe a, another pair of pants and some shirts. I was going to throw it in the truck, leave my phone behind with a note that says, Honey, I'm sorry. I'll never explain it to you. You won't understand. But I was going to take off and just go. Me. You know, joyful, happy me. Always got a smile. Always got a, got a joke. I was so mad at certain things that were going on. About 2 o'clock that afternoon, I'm starting to build up the courage to go get the barrel bag. You know what a barrel bag is, right? Small, round bag, just enough to throw stuff in. I was getting ready to go pull it out of the closet when all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost came down and wrapped himself around me like cellophane. Hallelujah. I don't know what Dax thought. I, I see his mouth moving, but I, I don't understand them words. I'm t I begin to worship God, and I begin to rejoice in the Lord. And peace that absolutely surpasses any kind of, I mean, I went from, I'm down in the dumps, uh, I, I'm digging hole in the dumps just so I can get lower. I'll, I'll go from there to, Woo! Glory. A certain sister called me, wanted to chew me out. I don't tell you, I didn't appreciate your comments around the pulpit the other day. Whoop dee doo. I said, Well, I'm sorry, sis. You offended my daughter. I've been trying to get her to come back to church. I said, your daughter should have never, never left church, but I have something to believe that it just may possibly be you and not me that's the reason why she left. How dare you? Oh, I dare. I got peace like a river. I got peace. Honey, I, honey, I got, I got, I got a peace for you right now. Hallelujah. I'm going to hit you between the eyes with the word of God and the Holy Spirit. And when I got through, well, I'm never coming back. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to God. She kept her word. Can I tell you something? You are more than welcome to call me and critique me any day you want to. You can call me up and say, I didn't agree with what you did, Pastor. I didn't agree with what you said. I didn't even like the color of your tie on your suit. Great. But if all you're going to do is nitpick. Oh, I'm sorry. You guys don't do that. I'm sorry. That was for another crowd. Because you don't. But can I tell you there are pastors that before this day is out, their phone is going to ring. Tomorrow morning before the sun comes up, somebody's already working on what they're going to say to the pastor. Can I tell you the best thing you can do is what somebody did for me at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on that day in April of 2016. Somebody prayed for me and the Holy Ghost was dispatched to my living room and God whoo, God came down and gloriously touched my soul hallelujah September the same year just abide with me I went down to Chattanooga Tennessee stepped into the office of the overseer he was prepared. He was convinced P.W., that's me, Paul Winfred, P.W., 
He was convinced I was coming in to quit. When I got through sharing some things with him, he said, well, I got to tell you, this meeting hasn't gone at all like I thought it was going to. I said, oh, you thought I was going to quit. I said, you forgot something. You may have appointed me there by your official position, but the fact of the matter is God called me to Russellville. And if he hadn't touched me back in April, maybe it would have gone that way today in September. But let me tell you what God did. God did for me what you, sir, will never be able to do. God did for me what no one else in this office. Is. Now, I'm here. God did something for me that they can't do for me from Cleveland, Tennessee. God touched me. God helped me. God strengthened me. God saw me through. Oh, I didn't get it because I sat down and said, I think I'll read for inspiration the doctrine of the church of God. We believe. Really? I believe what we believe. Don't get me wrong. That's, I'm, not, I'm not putting down our declaration of faith. But I'm telling you, I got to go beyond handwriting in the book. I got to go beyond handwriting inside the minute book. I got to go beyond those things. I got to be touched by the Holy Ghost. I got to be touched by the hand of God. I got to be touched by faith. Somebody say amen. amen. Whew, scared me. I thought I was at a church of Christ. Y'all got quiet on me. Listen, Paul says... You need to understand, you didn't get what you got because you were reading the law, doing the law. You got what you got because of faith. Walking it, talking it, living it, being it. People of faith. In the world that we're living today, people are attempting to correct uh, themselves and make a Christian life that has more to do with the material than the spiritual. Don't believe me? This is why I don't listen to Christian television anymore. I'm so sick and tired of somebody telling me that if I'm not driving the best car, not living in the fanciest house, not wearing the finest clothes, not, not, uh, where, where's my, where, where, there, Shelby. Shelby said, yeah, we noticed that suit's been around a while, Pastor. I'm going to keep it on until double-breasted suits come back in style again. But if you're not doing that, you're not eating at the finest restaurants and so on and so on, then, friend, your faith is a failure. Baloney. And the Hebrew is salami. I got news for you. You've never talked with some of the saints of God that I have who didn't have more than a couple of slices of bread to see them through the day. And yet God blessed them in such an abundant manner that, friend, every time they went to the bag, there was another slice or two of bread in the bag. You're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm telling you, I've talked to people who lived off of oil, and I don't mean the kind you put in your car. I'm talking about the kind that you cook with, that you bake with, and they would go and they would check the little canister of oil that they had, and they would literally put a dipstick inside there to find out where the oil was at. God moved upon them to help this neighbor and to help that neighbor and to help another neighbor, and they would put the stick in and find out that the level of the oil had not changed. You want to know who that is? I'll tell you who that is. That's Brother David's uh, wife there who is on the executive committee for the Church of God while they were still living down there in South America. Her family used oil like that. and God blessed them with a gallon jug of oil and they shared with others because they wanted others to have it. And every time they'd go back after pouring it out, they would check it. It would still be at the same level. That oil never went. I'm telling you, God has able to help people who don't look like they got much but they got more than all of the Warren Buffets of the world amen, amen brother Nolan preach on I believe I will you either amen me or I'll amen me one of us is going to get amen Paul is clear in attempting to correct the direction of the Galatians back to the gospel of Christ that was first delivered to them when they began to believe we believe, I mean, let's just go back to the beginning. We believe and we know that God created Adam and Eve. Good, three of you, that's great, hallelujah. Let me try that again. We know and believe that God created Adam and Eve. We know it wasn't Adam and Steve. It wasn't Adam and Madam. Hello. And 20, 
100 years later, roughly, a guy by the name of Abram comes along and makes a covenant with God. Can you imagine living in your father's house, who just, by the way, is one of the leading, leading, I want to stress to you, idol makers? Can't you just see him putting a shine on what daddy just created? Maybe he's putting an extra coat of stain or, 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 or some kind of, you know, shine upon a wooden idol. And all of a sudden, a voice speaks to him. Abram. I'll be right with you. Let me, let, me, let me get this last batch of idols up on the shelf for dad has a coronary. Adam. Who that? Adam. I want to make sure you're paying attention. Abram. Are you with me now? Everybody's like, what's he talking about Adam for you? Abram. Who is that? I am the God you don't know. Now, I have an imagination. You're not going to find those words exactly there. But I know you. What do you want? I want you to get out of this country. I want you to get out of this house. I want you to get away from your daddy. Where do I go? I'll show you as you go. Can't you imagine him going home and speaking to Mrs. Abram? Honey, we're moving. Where are we going? I don't know how to tell you this. I don't know. Well, if you don't know where we're moving to, how will I know when we get there? Oh, trust me, you'll know. And so... He enters into a relationship. And thus is the humble beginnings of a new race of people drawn out from a people. You see, up till now, things had kind of gone, shall we say, south. All of mankind had forgotten God. All of mankind had stopped calling upon God. Even Abram, he could trace his lineage all the way back to the first man, Adam. But even they have gotten to the place where they are dependent upon idol gods. Listen to me. It don't take long at all for that to happen. It only takes a couple of three generations until we lose a generation. Grandma, Grandpa, you better be praying for your grandchildren. You better be living a life before them in such a way that encourages them to live for Jesus. Because if you don't, your great-grandchildren may grow up never knowing the name of Jehovah. Four hundred and thirty years after Abram starts walking in covenant relationship with God, 430 years later, an old geezer comes down from Mount Sinai, got in his hands tablets of stone. Not old tablets from, you know, IBM or whoever. Tablets, get it? Tablets. But instead, with tablets of stone that God himself has literally hewn out and written in those stones his law 430 years we got 2500 plus years involved to go from Adam until we get to Moses so they can have the law of God but did you miss it Abram didn't have the law of God Abraham didn't have the law of God 
Abraham didn't have the Ten Commandments. Abraham lived by faith, walked in faith, declared his love for God by faith. Everything he did was by faith because he didn't have anything written out. Today we've got the Bible available to us. We find it so stinking hard to be able to follow God in regards to that. I don't get it. I confess I don't understand it. Why it is so hard for us to know what God wants of us. But apparently it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. Did you read your Bible today? I'm asking you, but I'm not asking you to answer me. Did you read the Bible today? Did it take a Sunday school class for you to do that? Did it take the pastor saying, turn with me in your Bible to this place for you to actually look in the Bible today? Did you read your Bible yesterday? How about Friday? Did you read the scripture? Did you let God speak to you for just a few moments through his word? I even go back and reread my, my devotional text, whatever it may be. I'm more interested in my devotional text than I am the devotion written by the devotion er or whoever that is that writes that. Oh, I'm sure it speaks to them a certain way, but I want it to speak to me. I want the word of God. Oh, you're not hearing me. I, I, I want to do what happened to me one morning at 2.30 in the morning. My wife, anybody remember home interiors? Some of y'all are grinning. I'm like, what do you mean remember it? I still have it. <laughs> she had a plaque on the wall. Wooden plaque had a kind of a, look like a brass thin sheet of whatever and the book of Joshua chapter 24 as for me and my house we will serve the Lord. Anybody, anybody get that one? Get that as a gift at your home interiors party? Earned it because you had so many things? I saw her hit you brother it's okay. 2.30 in the morning I can't sleep. It doesn't just happen when you're in your 60's. It happened to me when I was in my late 20s. I can't sleep. I get up. I do something uniquely strange. I picked up the Bible. I begin to read the Bible and God was trying to share some things with me. And all of a sudden God gets my attention and that plaque on the wall began to glow. I'm, look, I'm the only one up. Rick's still in bed asleep. Diane's still in the bed asleep. I begin to look around as if I'm going to have somebody else say, did you see that? Do you see that? Just me. But all of a sudden those words come off of that plaque and advance toward me and clearly as for me in my house we will serve the Lord. Oh, do you know how hard it is for a Pentecostal fellow like me to be quiet at 2.30 in the morning? Oh, it didn't sound loud outside but inside it was oh. It was absolutely ringing off the walls. My wife asked me this morning, what happened to you? I saw where you got up. I felt when you came back to bed. I said, I don't know how to tell you this. I'm losing my mind. And I told her, I said, I had an encounter with God last night. Every once in a while, I'll have an encounter with God. This old man still dreams dreams. This old man still has visions. This old man still gets moved upon by God. Oh, I may be 65, but on the inside, I hadn't even turned 35 yet. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, friend, God's doing something. And I want you to know I'm all for it. I'm with him 100,000%. Bring it on, God. Let's make it happen again. I'm praying for a revival here. I want somebody to come in literally if it takes it with their coattail on fire and I may be the one to ignite it just to guarantee it happens but I'm looking for God to give us a revival that you can't sit there like you are right now looking at me but you're going to have to stand to your feet. You're going to have to wave your arms. You're going to have to open your mouth. You're going to have to worship God like you. Some of you are going to get filled with the Holy Ghost again. Preach on, preacher. Believe it well. 430 years after Abraham started walking with God by faith, Moses comes down with the law of God. Now I want you to grab this. He didn't bring the law of God down to draw us to God. 
The law of God does not draw you to God. I'm going to say it again. The law of God does not draw you to God. The law of God watches over you. The law of God absolutely is your guardian. The law of God is your special detail of security to help you to walk the walk and talk the talk and live the life that's pleasing to him. But it's not a check-off list. Abraham had faith in God, not God's law. Say it again, Pastor. I believe it will. Abraham had faith in God. He did not have faith in God's law. Well, no, it wasn't given yet. No, but it already existed. When you begin to understand that the law of God watches over us, and reveals to us how we ought to live so we don't live outside the boundary of faith. Say it again. The law of God reveals to us the life that we ought to live so that we don't live outside the boundary of faith. Abraham Believing God, not his law, but believed God. The Bible says his faith was accounted to him as righteousness. Verse 11 is very clear in the third chapter of Galatians. He says there, no one is justified by the law in the sight of God. And that's evident for the just shall live by faith. I'm going to say, I said the just shall live by faith. They don't walk around with a copy of the law of God in their hand going, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I better not do that. Oh, Father, forgive me for that. No, friend, they walk around by faith. If they make a mistake, there's a God in heaven who's got more than enough blood to cover them, to wash them, to make them every whit whole. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. We live by faith and not by faith. Oh, thank God. Well, true, but the scripture said sight. You didn't get that page, did you? <laughs> Listen to me. When you walk by faith, you're going to mess up. I'm going to try that again. When you walk by faith, when you live by faith, you're going to mess up. Well, bless God, Pastor, I don't believe it. Well, too bad. You'll learn I haven't met a person yet that lives by faith, walks by faith, is guided by faith that hasn't messed up. We spoke when we should have kept silent. We went when we should have stayed still. We stood still when we should have went. Faith is not perfect. Faith is just attempting. But you need to be careful what you believe in. You see, I think it really matters what you do believe in. Pastor, do you believe that there are aliens? Yes, and they're all at the Texas-Mexico border. <laughs> That's not the kind of aliens I'm talking about. I know. You probably got excited when somebody gave that goofy picture that they took on Mars and claimed, look, there's a doorway in the side of a cliff. Okay. Do I? I don't believe for one minute that God created, created all of the billions of planets across the universe. We can't even number them. There's so many. He said, I think I'll put life on this one. Anybody got a problem with that? You're God. Do what you want to do. Could God do that? Sure. Does it make sense that God would do that? No. God loves life. God loves life. How much? He will give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Oh, you've read the book. 
Good. This will make it easier. Listen to me. I don't know where we get off thinking that we're so highfalutin, almighty, that we're the only thing God ever made. Look around, sweetheart. He's made stuff so small, even with the best glasses you could find at your local eyeglasses R us outlet. You're never going to see it. We see things, you know, working across our vision. We're like, I'm seeing spots. Pray that you're not in a Dalmatian factory. You'll get that in a minute. We, we see blurs and we see things and, and pieces of lint that get stuck to our eye. But we can't see some of the most minute life that God's ever made. Even sometimes with the help of a microscope, we can't see it. God wants us to know what we believe in. The Galatians started out like Abraham. And then they tried to live after the teachings of Moses. What I like to refer to as the boundary guidelines. Let me, let me bring it down home to you here if I can. It's like driving a vehicle, car, truck, tractor, whatever. You can drive on the road or as Tanya likes to do, off-road. Now she purposely does it. She doesn't you know, just lose control. You can drive on or off the road. Amen? If you drive on the road, there are lines to guide you and tell you where your lane is. Some people that I encounter on Melinda Ferry Road going home or coming to work at the church do not believe in lines. It doesn't matter whether it's a small, smart car. I drive by those and I always look at them and go, oh, when it grows up, it wants to be a big car. <laughs> or like it was the other day, a guy in a semi-truck cab is on my side of the road for way too long for me to feel comfortable. I don't know if he woke up, looked up, or whatever up, but I about threw up before we met up. <laughs> Hello. Hello. He didn't observe the lines. Thankfully, he came to himself. And we didn't come together. Lines, speed limits, signs to help regulate how fast you can go, should go, or better not go faster than. I love people who like to disprove the little yellow signs, you know, up under the big curve thing. 35 miles an hour. Oh, I can do this at 60. Woohoo! Just some good old boys. Never meaning no harm. They rolled their car over and over till they got on the farm. You know, I made that up. There are those things to help regulate your ability to drive. Y'all tell her later what I said about her. To regulate how you drive on the road. If you're going to drive off the road... Tanya, there are obstacles everywhere. There are ditches. There are trees. There are boulders of different heights. Some you see, some you feel. At the wrong last moment. There are waterways. There are cliffs that do not reveal themselves as cliffs until you go over them. And then you start singing, I see Jesus. It's better than Jesus take the wheel. What I'm trying to tell you is that living by faith is like driving a vehicle. There are governing signs, governing situations to help us. Understanding the limits of the law helps us not to fall for anything. Ignoring the limits of the law is an invitation for disaster. Up in Montana, you can drive as fast as you want to because there are no speed limit signs on the interstate. But they will pull you over after 95 miles an hour. One young man said, hey, 
There's no speed limit sign. I can drive as fast. If I want to drive 120 miles an hour, I can drive 120 miles an hour. And the officer then pulls out a book with pictures. Can you control your car when the right tire on the front goes out? Oh, yeah. At 120 miles an hour? Oh, yeah. Let me show you some pictures. This guy was doing 115. And the right front tire on his car went out. He could not control it. We scooped him up in what we called a body bag. What we put in the body bag did not look like a body. He showed him more pictures and more pictures. He said, yes, sir, you can drive as fast as you want to, but the fact of the matter is you need to drive no faster than you can control your vehicle. Honey, you can live outside of the boundaries of faith all you want to, but can I tell you something? When you do, don't be shocked when you splatter your soul on something that absolutely shows up suddenly and is not covered by your freedom in faith. Preach on, Brother Nolan. I believe I will. Understanding the limits of the law helps us not to fall for anything. Understanding the limits of the law helps us to enjoy life, live by faith. Ignoring those limits will invite disaster upon us. Over-dependence, however, on the law can be deadly. You ever been picked up by the ambulance to be taken to the emergency room? Somebody's calling 911 now. Did the ambulance driver stay at the speed limit on the road you live on? The road I live on, the speed limit is supposed to be 25. The road I live on, not the highway that I live off of. The road I live on. But what if... Time is of the essence, and they're taking you to the emergency room. Do you want the ambulance driver to go, oh, I'm telling you right now, I am not speeding this ambulance one mile above the speed limit. Oh, light turned red, but you better stop. No. no. Over-dependence. And the problem we have is, is too many of us aren't dependent enough upon the law of God, but by the same exclusion, we go to the point that we are over, over involved with the law. People living by certain commandments, but not others. Pharisees were like that. We are the children of Abraham because we follow Moses' law. If they were the children of Abraham, they would live by faith like Abraham did. And if they truly understood what Moses brought down, they would still be living like Abraham did. Oh, you tithe on your spices and all kinds of other stuff, but you strain, you choke to death on the other points of the law. You go around, you don't honor the law that says honor your mother and father but you tell your mother and father who are in need oh I'm sorry that money was given to me by God and it certainly can't be brought down to your level you let me know okay she God does not want us living in fear of the law I'm going to say that again because some of y'all are struggling with it. God does not want us living in fear of the law of God. God wants us to live faithfully. He wants us to have faithful lives. Somebody say amen. He wants us to live in reverence of him, pleasing him, being blessed by him because of faithful living unto him. God wants people like Abraham who don't have it all memorized, who don't have it all written down, but they walk by faith and not by sight. They live by faith and not by what just they hear from somebody else. They absolutely are in tune with God, being led by God to a country they've never seen before. Some of y'all, will you know when you're in heaven? Looks a lot like West Virginia, don't it? I hope not. 
Maybe the good places in West Virginia. There are good places in West Virginia. For the people watching at home. It's because of Jesus Christ and our faith in his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, that we are able to live by faith unto God. Last page. Bring it in for a landing. When God said in Genesis 22 and 18, in, he's speaking to Abraham, in your seed all the nations of the world shall be blessed. He did not say in your seeds, plural. He said singular. In your seed all the nations of the world shall be blessed. He wasn't talking about Isaac. I'm not blessed by Isaac. Isaac had a problem. He loved one kid over the other one, and they were twins. Sometimes twins come out, one redheaded, one not. He loved the redheaded one. He loved the one that looked like an animal. Maybe he needed to love that child like that. I don't know. You know, it's like that baby was so ugly, only a mother gorilla could love it. You never hear that, do you? I didn't say your baby was a monkey. I've, not in this congregation, but I've seen some outside this congregation. I'll get a phone call about that. You watch and see. I'll get a phone call about that. Who he was talking about was Jesus Christ. In your seed is a messianic reference to the Son of Almighty God who would come one day and all nations will be blessed because of Jesus. Not because of Isaac. Not because of Jacob or any of his 11 moronic brothers. In Jesus, the nations will be blessed. In Jesus, there shall be blessings. There will be blessings because of Jesus covenant that God and Abraham had wasn't nullified 430 years later because Moses come down stoned deal with it instead God did not break his promise to Abraham because in Christ Jesus the seed of Abraham the promises of God are in him yes and amen. And the problem we've got is too many people want to nullify the walk with God, the life of faith with God, being in faith to God by going crazy over thou shalt not this, that, and the other. What God did was gave us understanding through lines and signs, speed limit signs, load limit signs, street name signs that help us to be obedient to the law, but help us to live by faith, just like Abraham did. Oh, you can try to drive 75 all you want to on every street you can, but at some point it's going to get you. You can choose to ignore the load limit signs on little bridges all you want to, but at some point, it's going to get you. You can try to turn on any street you want to to find somebody's house, but unless you turn on the right street by the right name, you're never going to find it. Shout with me anytime now. There's a reason why the law was given, but it was not for the purposes to make us happy hate life and not want to live life but it was showing us the limits of our faith showing us the boundaries of our faith showing us where we could where we should where we ought not go I'm, I'm, I'm concluding God called out to Abraham and Abraham heard God and obeyed him three things God said get out of your country 
What would you do if God came to you and said, get out of America? Abandon your home. Get away from your daddy. I said that to somebody one time. I said, well, you must know my dad. If you're under the wrong influence, don't let that person be your daddy. Somebody say amen. God called to Moses. Called him up to the top of the mountain. And then sent him back down with his law to guide him through his journey here on earth. Jesus came. Jesus called many. He chose some. And then encouraged us to live by faith. Why? I'm going to show you the blessings of living by faith. Real simple. They're in the attitudes that ought to be. Or you like to refer to them as the Beatitudes. Matthew chapter 5. I'm reading the New Living Translation here. Matthew chapter 5 verse 3. God Blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble for they shall inherit the whole earth. God blesses Those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Yeah, those who live by that kind of faith, they're blessed. It's not always about how big your bank account is or how new your car or truck is. How much your house is worth even in these inflated times? When you go to the store and it's happening a lot more and you have to have a plan B for what you planned on buying because what you were going to buy is not in stock. It's when you go to the gas pumps and you realize that overnight Gas rose 25, 30, 50 cents a gallon. And you don't have that kind of money this week. And yet you still have to have gas in the car. I could go on, but you understand. We're going to see families coming together again. We're going to have to move in with one another. Because it's going to take all of us working to keep one house with a roof over our heads. I said, Preacher, you're scaring me. I don't want to scare you, but I want you to be ready. What was is no more. We think changing somebody in the White House is going to make the difference. It's got to be more than a change in the White House. It's got to be a change at the throne of every man, woman, and child in America. Because until that happens, we're going to be led by our lust. We're going to be led by our sin. We're going to be led by our evil. And that's where we're at. That's where we're at. We'll find you. We'll throw you in jail if you destroy the area of snail darters. If you mess with the eggs of a condor. You want to abort a baby? No problem. We got you covered. We can give you a pill to do it overnight or we'll bring you in and perform an operation. I think the greatest travesty was finding out that there was a planned parenthood facility within a quarter of a mile, within visual sight of the high school in Ray County 
Tennessee. And I learned that regularly girls were being taken from the high school and abortions were being performed. You can't send your daughter with a my doll to help her with menstruation cramps. You cannot send an aspirin for your child to take because of headaches. But they can take your child out of school, perform an abortion operation on them, and never tell you anything. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Well, that's not going to happen. Yeah, keep saying that. I know a woman who raised two boys. Both of them grew up to be drug pushers as well as users. She didn't plan it that way. She didn't raise them that way. If you think just bringing them to church is all it takes, I got news for you. It takes something happening inside them. And if they don't see it happening in you, don't be shocked when it doesn't happen in them. I sang that old song just a minute ago. I'm living by faith in Jesus above. I'm trusting you. I'm confiding in his great love. And from all harm safe. Whew. I'm living by faith. And I feel no alarm. It's not going the way I thought it would, Pastor. Keep walking. Keep living by faith. Keep calling his name out. It, it, it's not coming together like I had it planned. It, it's falling apart. We, we didn't know that there was going to be a sickness that would drain us of every dime we've put back. Keep walking by faith in Jesus above. Our, our pantry used to be packed with food. and Now I can count the number of cans. And have fingers left over. See, living by faith isn't based upon how blessed you are. Living by faith is how blessed you are in spite of your lack of material goods. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, speak to every person here, God, I pray. When I started thinking about the life of Abraham, God, it blew my mind. Going to a place he'd never been before, following a God that, to be honest, neither he nor anyone else could see, but he heard you. And then when Moses brought down the law of God to reveal to us how far we had wandered from you, to get us back on the proper road of faith, we took it too far, God. We didn't just beat ourselves up, but God, then we took the law and we beat other people with it. God, help us to live by faith again, to walk by faith again, to honor you with faithful living. God, I pray, I, I mean this from my heart, God, I pray this nation doesn't have to be brought down to nothing for us to turn our heart around. Help us to do it now. Help us to repent now. Help us to turn our heart towards you now. Help us to walk by faith again now. Jesus' name. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm not here to point an accusing finger at you. 
I know better. There's three more pointing back at me from my own hand. But I'm asking you simply, do you know that you know that you know where you're at with God? If right this very moment your heart stopped beating, your lungs stopped processing air for oxygen, and your brain, your brain fizzled out because there was no more fire in your neurosystem. Do you know what would happen to you spiritually? Do you know that you would close your eyes here and open them there in the presence of God? Or would you wake them in eternal darkness in hell never, ever to take advantage of what I'm about to offer you right now. Right now. For every person that will have faith, God will forgive your sin. Right now, for everyone who will operate in the realm of faith, God will remove the guilt from you and allow you to feel the Freedom from burden of anxiety right now. And all you have to do is believe. Right now, all you have to do is believe. Would you say that with me? I believe. I believe. Come on. I believe. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. His life is my life. My death, he's already died. And my hope is in him eternally by faith. If you've got a need that you need to pray about, family member for yourself, Situation at work, next door neighbor, next door neighbor's dog. I can't think of anything better I could do today than to pray with you. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss us in prayer, but if you need prayer, come up here. I'll wait with you. I'll pray with you, and I won't be the only one. There'll be others that'll join us. Amen. Father, we love you. Thank you, God, that you've called us to a life of faith. You've given us the law of God to help us to stay within the confines of the boundary of our faith so as not to get out into muddy, swampy, nasty stuff, God, that gets our car bogged down but helps us, God, Lord, to stay on the road that takes us all the way to glory. Keep us, God, safe in your hands, I pray. Help us to live faithful. Help us to be found faithful in you. Until the appointed hour, God, of your return or until at least when we come back to worship you again. Until then, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Bless you. Some of you would like to help come and pray with our brothers up here. Come on.